All right, just going to do a quick video showing that Jack Smack 77 is indeed prideful and he's he hates the idea of coming to God in a broken, contrite spirit, of coming to God in godly sorrow for your sins, according to 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 8 to 11. He hates the doctrine of biblical repentance, which repenting of sins is you come to God in godly sorrow for your sins, for sinning against a holy, righteous God. Revelation 15, 4 and 1 Samuel 2, 2, 2 verse 2 are clear that God is the only one that is holy. Okay? We're not holy. We're a bunch of dirty, disgusting sinners that are only saved by the grace of God. You can see Mark 2.17 compared with, sorry, I was going to say compare Mark 2.17 with Ephesians 2.8 and 9. We're sinners saved by the grace of God. So it's just weird how, how the thought of, I mean, if he was not prideful, then why is the thought of just humbling yourself before God and coming to him in a contrite spirit, why is it so repulsive to these guys? It's so weird. I'm going to show you the uh, comments because I left a comment on his video uh, where he's mocking the uh, doctrine of repentance. He calls it meat pastor Ricky repentance. And, you know, he's a mocker. Uh, he's a, I, I said down here in the comments, look at you mocking like your father, the devil. I quoted Jude 1, 17 to 18, uh, which talks about how there's mockers in the last time. I quote Proverbs 14, 9, fools make a mock at sin. And it's true. I mean, I showed in another video how Jack Smack 77 plays Grand Theft Auto. Just look up my video, Jack Smack 77. It's called Why Does Jack Smack 77 Play Grand Theft Auto? You know? You see, he doesn't believe in any godly story. He doesn't believe in a changed life after salvation. He calls that backloading works. And he accuses that of, oh, you're just teaching works for salvation. No, the changed life comes after your salvation. It's not to be saved or to stay saved, okay? That is heresy. Anyone who does say that you have to clean up your life to be saved is a heretic and is teaching works salvation, okay? I don't believe that, okay? The changed life is the Holy Ghost comes in and cleans your life up. It's called spiritual regeneration. You can read about that in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 to 10. But he responds, uh, just, you know, just full of bitterness and hatred. Uh, and it's not, you know, godly hatred. It's not righteous anger. It's just, you know, fleshly anger from Satan, basically. He says, you are a servant of Satan, you unsaved, works-trusting, hell-bound bastard. Okay? Never even dealt with the scriptures that I quoted. So now I respond back to him. Uh, when have I ever said that you have to uh, work perpetually to be saved? See, if I'm a work salvationist, that would mean I'd be saying you have to basically perpetually work and do continual works to be saved. Um, it, it's like, you know, like what the Roman Catholics teach, like Roman Catholicism says, when have I ever said that, okay? I don't believe, again, again the changed life after salvation is not the same thing as the Roman Catholic system of self-righteousness and works to be saved, okay? Roman Catholicism preaches the false gospel. I've shown that in other videos. Um, the changed life is the Holy Ghost comes in and cleans your life up, okay? And it's done after salvation. That's not work salvation, okay? Uh, it's ridiculous. And I say to him, um, I've never said that you have to work perpetually to be saved. Biblical repentance, I wrote, is not work salvation. Biblical repentance is having godly sorrow over sins. I wrote the Apostle Paul and the Apostle Peter preach repentance, so I guess they are hellbound work salvationists as well. And I quote Acts 3.19, where Peter is speaking, repent, ye therefore, and being averted, that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Okay, you can also read 2 Peter 3, 9, where he also talks about, you know, how God's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Okay, 2 Peter 3, 9. So, if repentance is some kind of big, horrible heresy, then I guess Peter, I guess he's in hell, a hell-bound work salvation is too. Then I quote Acts 17, 30, Paul preaching, at the times of this ignorance and the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Acts 20, 21, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance towards God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh no, wait a second, I thought repentance is just turning from unbelief to belief. No, it's not. Repentance towards God, God the sorrow, in other words, and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Two different things. They're not, they're not the same. And of course, Acts 26, 20, but showed first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coasts of Judea and then to the Gentiles that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. A changed life. Works meet for repentance in Acts 26, 20. Compare that over to Ephesians 2, 10 and Titus chapter 2, verses 11 to 14, which talks about in Ephesians 2.10 how, you know, God's created us unto good works. We're created for good works. And how Titus chapter 2, verse 11 to 14, talks about how God will, 
you know, purify us and make us a peculiar people zealous of good works. Okay, again, that's Ephesians 2.10, which talks about how we're, we're his workmanship created for good works. In Titus chapter 2, verse 11 to 14, we're purified and made a, a peculiar people zealous of good works. Okay, you show works meet for repentance. So it's not work salvation, it's the results of biblical salvation. But now I'm going to show you some scriptures because it's become very evident that the, the thought of coming to God in a broken, contrite spirit with godly sorrow for sinning against a holy, righteous God. Again, Revelation 15.4 and 1 Samuel 2.2 2 are clear. God's the only one that's holy and righteous. We're not holy without Jesus Christ. Isaiah chapter 64, verse 6 is clear that our righteousness, our self-righteousness, are as filthy rags in the eyes of God. Okay, but Psalms 34.18. I'm just going to cover a couple scriptures. Uh, I know it's written down. Psalms 34.18 the Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. What's wrong with that? Why is that so repulsive to these anti-repentance uh, heretics? I try to refrain from using the term easy believism. The reason why is because salvation is easy. Okay, Salvation is easy. Okay, Grace is a free gift. That's why I don't use the term free grace to describe these heretics, because according to Romans 3.24 and Romans chapter 5, verses 15-18, Grace is a free gift. That simple, okay? So, but what they're preaching is not free grace, okay? They're preaching a perverted form of free grace, okay? Free grace is simply that God gives you his grace without any works. You're not having to work for his grace. Like some of the Lordship Salvation heretics like Jesse Morell and Richard Pankowski teach, okay? 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 8 to 9, Romans 11, 6, and Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 are clear that we don't earn God's grace by our works, okay? Grace is a free gift not earned by our works. Again, 2 Timothy 1, 8 to 9, uh, Romans 11, 6, and uh, Ephesians 2, 8, 9. Okay, show that grace is a free gift. So that's why I, ha I had to get that out there, okay? So when I say, you know, I'm talking to these guys, I'm not, I try to refrain from using that term free grace because it is a scriptural concept, but they're preaching a, a perverted form of grace that is void of any repentance, void of any godly sorrow for your sins. Uh, sorry, man. Psalms, Psalm 51, 17. Another good scripture on about, I've written down. Psalms 51, 17. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken spirit and a contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. Hmm. Again, what's what, why is it so repulsive just the thought of humbling yourself before God? What's wrong with that? It's weird. Shows that they're the ones who are self-righteous when it comes down to it. They'll accuse people like me who preach biblical repentance. Okay, I, I don't like using the word preach because, again, I'm not a preacher. I'm not a teacher. Okay, I don't claim to be a preacher. I'm not a man in ministry. I just make Christian videos. Okay, so uh, because people accuse me of trying to be a preacher, I'm not. And I've never once claimed to be a preacher, nor am I trying to be a preacher. Okay, because I'm not. I'm not old enough for that yet. I'm too young. Uh, Isaiah 57, 15. Another good scripture. Yeah, Isaiah. I'm just going to cover a couple more scriptures. Isaiah 57. Probably hear the fan getting pretty loud on my computer. Isaiah 57, 15. For thus saith, saith the high and lofty one, a uh, lofty one, referring to God, because you have capital capital letter there. Uh, for thus saith the high and lofty one, that inhabiteth, it, that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy. Sorry, a mouse. I will dwell in the high and holy place with him, also that is of a contrite spirit, contrite and humble spirit, uh, to, re to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. Okay. Now understand this is dispensation under the law, but all scripture is given by inspiration of God and it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction. Uh, 2 Timothy 3, 16, 17, uh, Romans I think it's 15, 4, and 1 Corinthians 10, 11 are clear that the things written in the Old Testament, the things written aforetime, can be used for our learning and instruction, okay? So I just wanted to point that out. But yeah, contrite, humble spirit, that's simple. God likes it when you come to him in a contrite, humble spirit, not in your pride, not in your self-righteousness. Uh, Isaiah chapter 66, verse, I think it's verse 2. I think that's what I have written down. For all those things hath mine hand made, and all those things have been made, saith the Lord. But unto this man will I look, even to him that is poor, and of a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word. Okay. 
good example of this would be the parable in Luke chapter sorry, Luke chapter 18, verses 9 to 14. The Pharisee was self-righteous, beating on his chest, Oh, I, I'm a good person. I thank God that I'm not like this other sinner, you know, this publican here. But the publican, he was humble. He said, God be merciful to me, a sinner. He understood he was a sinner. He understood he, need, he needed God's grace. And what was the result in verse 14? The publican was justified and the Pharisee was not. And Jesus goes on to say in verse 14 how, you know, when you're humbling yourself, you'll be exalted. But when you try to exalt yourself, you're going to be, you know, abased. Okay, some more scriptures. Proverbs uh, 16, 19. Proverbs 16, 19. Uh, actually, I'll start at verse 18, actually, in Proverbs 16, verse 18 to 19. Pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. Again, look back to the parable in Luke 18, verses 9 to 14. The Pharisee was prideful and haughty. Oh, yeah, you know, beating on his chest. And, and verse 9 goes on to say, well, verse 9, sorry, it starts off by saying that the Pharisee was trusting in himself that he was righteous. You know, he was prideful. He was boasting about his holiness before God. Meanwhile, the publican was not prideful, he was not haughty, he humbled himself. Look at verse 19. Better to be, better is it to be of a humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. Again, think back to the parable. The, the uh, publican was humble and he was lowly and he was justified as a result. He was exalted because he humbled himself. Okay, two more scriptures. James chapter four and verse number six. James four, six. But he giveth grace, grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace to the humble. God resists the proud. If you're coming to him in pride and self-righteousness, like the Pharisee did in Luke 18, God's going to resist you. Again, you have to have godly sorrow, according to 2 Corinthians 7, 8-11. Um, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse number 5. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you, be subject one to another, and be clothed in humi humility clothed in humility, not clothed in self-righteousness and pride. For God resisteth the proud, but and giveth grace to the humble. In verse 6, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may, sorry, he may exalt you in due time. Okay? When you're humbling yourself, you'll be exalted. And this is not in my notes, just going to quickly cover this. Luke chapter, uh, where is it? Look, I think 14 is verse, a good verse on that one. Luke 14, uh, I'm trying to remember where it is. Was it Luke 14? Sorry, I don't, I don't have the best memory. I can't remember off the top of my head. But uh, here it is, Luke 14, 11. That's the one I was looking for. Luke chapter 14, verse 11. For whoso humbleth, whosoever exalteth himself shall be abased. You know, like a Pharisee in Luke 18. And he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. You know, like in back in like what we read earlier in First Peter chapter five, verses five to six, when you humble yourself, walking in humility, God's gonna exalt you. You know. So just wanted to cover that. So Jack Smack seven seven, he displayed his pride, he displayed his arrogance and self righteousness, and just showed that he is a child of Satan. Because scripture I want to quickly go to. Um, just find the verse. And again, this is not part of my notes. This is kind of just uh, an extra. Oops, clicked the wrong thing there. It's an extra, just added thing. Because, you know, I don't want to leave any stone unturned. I want to. Oops, what was that? That was where the app kind of just went out of pride. Sorry about that. The app just kind of froze on me. But yeah, but Job 41 34, he beholdeth all high things. He is a king over all the children of pride. That's Job 41 34. Okay, Satan is the king over the children of pride, okay? Which is exactly what Jack Smack 7-7 seven, seven is. He's a child of pride, and thus he's a child of Satan. So, I want to show you guys that. Uh, don't be deceived by Jack Smack 7-7, seven, seven, and don't be deceived by his anti-repentance, his wicked mocking of biblical repentance of sins, humbling yourself before God, coming to God in a broken, contrite spirit. Again, why is, it, why is that so repulsive to some of these guys? It's weird. So anyway, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.